everybody, and welcome to the Bodacity Show. I am Jeanette Anderson. Welcome, ladies. I am so thrilled that all of you are here. I have created an amazing panel for you of expertise to talk about how we create our environment and how our environment supports or does not support us in being who we want to be, doing what we want to do, and having the results that we want to have. I thought this was a particularly important topic as we wind up the year, and people often at the end of the year, beginning of a new year, think about, okay, I want to get this in order, or I want to get that organized, or I want to uh, fix up this, or I, you know, we have all sorts of intentions, some of which we do, some of which we don't. And part of the important thing to take away is there are some simple things that we can do immediately that make us feel better, that make our environment more functional, and that ultimately allows our business to flourish and us to make more of a difference in the world. And, you know, I'm all about you being the difference that only you can be in the world. So that's what these lovely ladies are here about. And that's why we're here today. So please uh, introduce yourself, ladies, and tell us just a little bit about who you are, what you what you do, uh, who you serve, and why does that work matter to you so much? So uh, what do you do? Who do you serve? And why does that matter to you so much? I'm going to go across my screen. I'll start with Geraldine and then uh, and then Jeanette and then Catherine. All right. So Geraldine, tell us about you. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Geraldine. It's like Carolyn, but with a J. And my business is called Please Organize My Life. I've been a professional organizer and I've owned the company for the last 19 years. And I primarily help entrepreneurs get better organized. Uh, over the years, I've just found that entrepreneurs are just great at what they do, but often struggle with the business part of their business. And ultimately, that's where you either succeed or fail. And so this work is just really important to me because I just see so many people who are passionate and have so many gifts. And because they haven't sort of focused on handing in their taxes on time and dealing with some of the jobs that they maybe don't like to do, um, their businesses have gone sideways. And I really want to support the people in my life um, to just be more successful and to be more sustainable. And I think the reason that a lot of new businesses fail is that people don't have adequate support systems at the beginning. And I just want to be a resource to help people um, do well. Mm, love that. And I hear a deep commitment to supporting people and being really functional and practically mm. powerfully mm. Um, capable of doing what they want to do and what they're here to do with lots of support. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And Jeanette, the other Jeanette. <laughs> awesome. I love that we have two Jeanettes. It's not a common name, right? Oh, it's not. It's not. So I am Jeanette Chasworth and I am the color whisperer. And I have been doing design for 25 years now. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me rephrase that. I've been getting paid to do design for 25 years. <laughs> and I'm the color whisperer because of the way I listen to your house. And also, there's a magical power of color that most of us don't know exists, and it's at our fingertips. And once you learn the secrets to that, you can transform your world. Mm -hmm. So I use the power of color and also the power of design because your home affects you. Every part of your environment affects how you feel, mm -hmm. how you thrive. We learned over the last couple of years how important home is. And it didn't feel good. You were miserable. So we want you to feel good. And for me, it's all about transformation. I am Scorpio and I transform. And mm -hmm. so I really see interior design as a way of healing. And when your home is an environment that makes you feel good, many other wonderful things can happen. And that's mm -hmm. what I do. Love that. Awesome. All right. If I forget later, you guys tell me how, uh, remind me to talk to you about how you work with people remotely, because some of these things people might be thinking can only be done in person. All right. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, and good morning, afternoon, wherever everybody is today. I'm a feng shui consultant. I'm also an author and a podcast host. And uh, I used to do a lot of in-house uh, and in-office uh, walk-ins to help people rearrange their space in order to find balance and harmony. And uh, I've had to regroup, right? This is my new calling card right here you're looking at today. And um, some of the things I help people reduce their 
stress level in their space with colors and shapes and images, very similar to Jeanette Chaz's work right there. And one of the differences by using feng shui, and yes, everything has an energy and everything has a pulse, is I took this and I wrapped it just that one step farther to look at personality profiling, to go with the five elements that it goes through with feng shui and Chinese medicine and the color therapy and this kind of stuff. So one of the things I do with my clients is I give them the personality quiz right off the bat and I know who I'm talking to and I know how to help them really, really well. So that's all part of the gift coming up. And my focus is working on these diff five different hats of business because all the personalities work a little bit differently and they need to organize their office just that little bit different to personalize it for them. All right. And Catherine, why did you get into this work? Why feng shui? But why Why really working with energy and spaces and so forth? Why does this matter to you? Great question, because I don't know about you as an entrepreneur. Uh, and then you go, OK, I'm going to go work for somebody else. And then I want to branch out again. And then I want to work for somebody else. And I was trying to find myself and find how I fit into the place. And I discovered feng shui. And I actually had called my first feng shui consultant because I remarried it. I couldn't put the house together. I I don't know what, but that's all part of my story on my on my website. But what happened is it's helped me with my marriage. Say, uh, I swear I would probably be divorced again if I didn't have these skills. But I was in a training seminar. I flew into town in a boardroom with everybody else. And they explained how these personalities worked with the colors and the, and the cryptic messages you're sending herself. And I stood up literally and went, aha, I had this aha moment that finally, finally put it all together. And yes, it's just been wonderful for me. And I, I have to share. I have to, I can't not share with people and help them uh, create a balance in their life uh, because there's just, there's just so much out there for people to enjoy. So that's my calling is I want to help. I'm stepping up to the plate okay. to do that. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about environment and, and the role it plays in our life. So first of all, let's start with a really practical and then we can get more philosophical, but, but um, the holidays are coming up. We just did Thanksgiving for the U S people and, and uh, uh, Canadians, we did it back in October because we're early. <laughs> we're, we're ahead of Americans on many things. Um, just saying. So anyways, the, the thing that I would really like you to share is what are some practical things that people can do when it comes to their environment, their space, their energy, their organization, um, uh, and so forth, to make the holidays easier and less stressful and more enjoyable? Uh, so just jump in, whoever wants to jump in and weigh in on that. So Catherine, you go first, and then we'll go to the other two. Yeah, you know, it's so dark this time of year. You have to recognize that. So what's the opposite of dark? Light. I have Christmas lights strung up all around the house just because it's so dark. At like a four o'clock, you're turning on 16 different lights. You might as well hang Christmas lights up at that point. And any type of holiday, I, I talk about staging the home for you. Okay. Find out what you need for now. And it's not permanent. Nothing's permanent. Everything changes. Everything shifts. We, we grow. Our kids we have different needs. So just make your environment work for you. And you need to do that. Hang a wreath every season if you need to. Change have different colors. Wear cheery colors. Put out fake flowers if there's no real flowers. I mean, just, just embrace life and live it to the fullest. Awesome. All right. Thank you. And Jeanette, what would you say as far as the holidays? What are some ways to cut down on stress and make them easier and more enjoyable? I think it's really important not to try to hit you know, the standard and try to create your home, the Hallmark movie and, and have a Hallmark holiday. Um, I've got a really busy December and I wanted something different for Christmas this year. And so I went and I got, let me see if you can see it. So I got this, I put an angel on top. I'm done. Usually I go really out for, for decorating Christmas, but I really just don't have time this year and I'm not going to feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. you know what works for you. Everybody has that one thing that is Christmas to them. And so pull that out, Just, but do what's going to feel good to you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm right there with her. It, if you're so stressed out putting your house together and making it for the holidays and 
it's not fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And whether, you know, those holidays right now happen to be the Christmas season, but if you're watching this later, the same thing for Easter or any family gatherings or whatever, um, you know, make it easy on you. Um, all right. And uh, one of the things that I would add to that, I live a mobile lifestyle. So I used to love Christmas and I had like bins and bins of Christmas decorations. And now I don't. What I do I do is I take I make sure I embrace the scents. So I have I I just went and bought a little bit of spruce, a uh, sprig of spruce, which I can easily you know, either take with me or have here, and it smells like Christmas in the house now. Uh-huh. So even though I'm not decorating, so don't just attend to the one sense. What? But to me, it immediately felt like ah okay, it's the holidays now. So to me, it's Christmas cinnamon and orange or this or spruce cinnamon and orange. So I've got those smells uh, going in the house. Um, yeah. All right. And, and further to Catherine's thing around light, what I've taken to doing is consciously lighting more candles because mm-hmm. it is dark. And even though I put on the fluorescence, it still feels kind of dark. I know. But candles <laughs> make everything cheery. So, and it feels festive. All right, Gerilyn, how about you? What, what would be an organizational way to approach the holidays so that people don't lose their minds because we lose our minds at the holidays. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think a lot of the stress around Christmas is financial. And I see a lot of people, um, they haven't properly budgeted for Christmas. So they're throwing things on credit card and then they're stressed about how they're going to pay the credit card. And so I would just really encourage you to sit down and spend five minutes and just realistically say, you know, what is my budget for gifts? And that could be $50, that could be $1,000, but just realistically, you determine what that number is. And then just write down a few names and and a plan for how you're going to stick to that number and do that before you go to Costco, do that before you go to the mall. And and that's going to really just help to keep your stress level down because you've said, you know what, this is how much money I've decided to spend on this friend or family member, and I'm going to stick to it. And um, if there's people that you would like to buy gifts for, but if you can't afford to it, you can either re-gift or, or give them a little homemade gift certificate for an experience and say, you know, this Christmas, um, I would love to just have a special movie night out with you and uh, just include that in the card of just creating an experience together because we're all relational beings and a lot of times people will just would love to spend some more time with you rather than just have another set of uh, bath soaps on their counter so this would really encourage you to focus on that part Beautiful suggestion. Yeah. Rather than another thing that they put in their re-gifting closet and don't actually use until they give it to someone else, trying to remember if they're giving it back to the same person who gave it to them. So give people the gift of experience and time with you because that's truly what they want. So beautiful suggestion. And you can make that as uh, cost effective or, you know, luxurious as you want. That's up to you. Awesome. Love that. Okay. So when it comes to, um, well, actually, before we launch into that, I'd like each of you to just define what your work is for you so that people, because we have a notion of how we would define design or feng shui or whatever, but tell us the definition of what does feng shui mean, Catherine, for example, some people might not have heard that term. So what does it mean? What is it? It's about the energy. And so it goes way, way back to the Bon era, the Buddhism era. And it's talking about uh, the energy in ourselves, in our environment, the trees, the grasses, everything has a pulse and how it can move harmoniously. And so some of the layers of is is just tangibles. Mm -hmm. Then you're looking at crystal cryptic messages that you send yourself every day. That's your environment. And then, of course, there's a spiritual component as well, too. So when I say feng shui your day, there's many, many different layers of feng shui your day, but it's all ethical, good, clean living. And that's what feng shui is all about. Awesome. All right. So it's kind of like many layers like yoga. It's not just movement or it's not just space uh, organization. It's energetic values, all sorts of different layers to it. All right. And so what do you mean by design when you say design, Jeanette? So what does that mean? Because a lot of people think it means I need more frou-frou pillows. Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, interior design is everything in your house. It's floors, it's draperies, it's the furniture, it's the layout, it's the colors. 
I also use a personality type system that I use. Um, it's not, I, I don't profess to know feng shui. I say I know enough to know what I, I, I know enough about it, but I don't know enough to do any good. So, <laughs> <laughs> but what I do do does have to do with energy because there's different shapes that have energy, mm -hmm. there's different colors that have energy. And what I do is I match the, the energy of those things to you. So it's really important. One of the two things I see people make mistakes on the most is paint color. Oh, well, I saw in this magazine or in this TV show, you know, <coughs> this white is really great. Okay, well, for them, and no matter what color it is, it's going to look different in your house. Another thing is too much stuff. I think it's Coco Chanel says, when you get all dressed up, you should look in the mirror and then take off one thing. Most of us can take off at least one thing in our house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really being able to look at it and say, okay, you know, does this give me joy? Does this work for me? And does the space plan work? A lot of people don't understand how space planning works. And you can oftentimes use what you have, mm -hmm. but just change it differently and make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And sometimes we can't see what we can't see because we're so used to it being this place or that place or whatever. So it and helps to have that outside know. eye. Yeah. Sorry, what did you say? What you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. And so, Gerilyn, when you say organization, what does that mean to you? Because that has a lot of um, connotations for a lot of people. And for many people, it's a lot about shoulds and have tos and Feel, can feel quite daunting. Like I literally had a conversation with a client this morning who said, I have to get organized around my client follow-up. And there was a sense of kind of shame and frustration and challenge around that. So what do you mean when you say organization? So I, I, I believe there's sort of two parts to it. So on the physical side, I believe organization is just having everything in its place, like determining a home. Clutter happens when something doesn't have a home. So if you've established a home for the spare batteries or the extra iPhone cords, then, then you're going to cut down on the amount of clutter. But I think today that um, a big part of organization is the mental side. So what I'm really um, trying to focus on is just helping people with the, the mental clutter. So people are just feeling so overwhelmed in their mind. And so I think part of my job is just to sort of help you pull out all those things that are running in your mind and help you address those items so that mentally you really are uh, setting yourself up for success. Mm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So as we're talking about those three things and how they relate to our environment, let's talk about our businesses. Okay, so whether you have a home office or an office office, Office or a store, whatever your business environment may be, um, the front seat of your truck, like mine is sometimes. What? How do we make our set ourselves up for more success in our physical office environment? What are some tips and hints that each of you have for something that people can do right now to make their their office more um, successful and functional? So, whoever would like to go first, go, Geraldine. Okay, so I think that the, the, the biggest takeaway I'd like to leave you with is just to really um, have a notebook for your things to do items. I see people have a list on post-it notes, lists on like a rip-off paper pad, lists on pieces of paper, and that's cluttered all over their desk. And if you make the mistake of sort of writing an action item down on a calendar, when you turn that calendar page, you've you've lost that reminder of that list. So I think one of the easiest things you can start to do is just buy a dedicated notebook, and that is just things to do. I want you to have one things to do personal page and one things to do business page so that when you're working in your office, you're not getting distracted by that little note that said, oh, I forgot to buy my kid's teacher a Christmas gift. You know, I want you just to see your business items on that page. 
and and just really uh, be be diligent about writing it down in one spot. And if you're speaking with someone on the phone, just say, please wait a minute. I just need to grab my mo- notebook rather than just scribbling on the pers- first post-it note that you see that's that's accessible. So just, just take that discipline to just please give me a moment. I'm going to go and grab my notebook and have it in one spot. So I, I know this is a whole training and area of expertise of what you do and kind of you know, beyond a bit of the scope of what we can cover right now. But I have multiple notebooks uh, that like lots that <laughs> that are sitting here that I keep three things in. One is to do's. One is um, uh, like team notes and, and client notes. And one is prospect notes. Uh, so they're always like three section notebooks. However, my to do's I have pages of to do's and I then I cross them off and then I've got all these and I um like they get lost on the previous pages and and how you know so what's a simple way to and by the way I've overwhelmed myself by sitting down to write to-do lists and I got to page seven and I went oh shit I'm just gonna go watch tv like I can't handle this anymore it's too fun. so I to do myself into not doing um, so how do we manage to do's in a way that's so keeping them in one spot, one book is a good idea, but how do we manage them so they don't manage us and they actually get done? So I think one simple way is just to, at the end of your work day, I want you to just look at your list and decide of this list, what are the top three priorities that have to get done tomorrow? Yeah. And I want you to take a highlighter and highlight those three items or put that on a post-it note. So that tomorrow when you come into the office, you see those three action items and you don't do anything else. You don't check your email until you've completed those three action items. And if you end your workday with that priority of determining what is the most important thing for tomorrow, that way when you start fresh in the morning, you're not thinking like, oh, what do I have to do today? Scrolling through notebooks and and, and uh, getting getting distracted by the urgent, not important of email. Mm, Absolutely. And it can be very distracting. And by the way, for those of you who are my scanners and and creatives in the crowd who um, may not like being structured and who necessarily aren't necessarily analytical or logical, because Geraldine is very organized and very analytical and logical, um, that's not that curtailing. So if you just told yourself, oh, that's way too structured. Um, bullshit. It's not that curtailing. Highlight the three things. The next morning, do the three things and progress will be made. When we don't do that, we don't get progress and or you do like me and have that intention and put it out and then don't do it and then get to feel more good about ourselves. So so, um, it's not so much structure and constriction that it's going to curtail your creativity if you're having that little conversation with yourself. Um, All right. So what else would you advise? Thanks, Sherilyn. That's awesome. What else would you advise you guys as far as supporting us in our business being more conducive and and successful? Yep. I can go next. And I love the highlighter idea. (laughs) Sherilyn, I use it all the time. (laughs) One is really urgent and one was do this before the end of the day. What I'm finding with clients is that they have often have trouble. Same thing is keeping the work and the uh, home personal stuff separated. And often there's a, a office that if the ones that are going back to work, they've got an office or a workspace at home. And then there's the one, uh, the other one. So they're, they're, they're jumbling, they're getting things mixed up. But what I found was myself, I'm lucky enough to have a spare room for my stuff but not everybody is is so um, is, is available to do that. All the children are still home or something like this. But even though I'm sitting here in my, with my big space here, I've put down a colorful scarf or a tablecloth on my workspace. And I've got my supports around me. I've got my crystals hanging around here. There's one here. If I need some jade or some rose, uh, rosewood, it's all right here. And I've got my system left to right or right to whatever works for me. I got my stuff in place, but it's not that easy when you're sharing the dining room table with your children or whatever. But I still go back to this set down. Think of, remember those blotters from way, way back? Fix the scarf, pick your color, your favorite color, put that down. This is where I'm going to work. And this is what I need 
to work with. But if you're going to, again, watch a movie, check your Facebook or whatever, go on over to the couch for your personal type things. But when you're back at your workspace, this is set up and this is where we're going to work. Mm. And I think that setting some key boundaries to get these things done is really super important. So of course you need heat, you need light and you need color and you need that function of flow just for you for working. When you're finished working, go on, walk the things over or look at the tablet or whatever that you need to do. So check those boundaries. Yeah, I I love that there's a few pieces in that and it gave me an inspiration. Again, mobile lifestyle can be challenging because I'm in a different environment all the time, not my space most of the time. So I can't do too much to it. But that doesn't mean and I used to do this and have forgotten uh, that I had a little mobile design in a kit, a kit in a bag, which was a scarf that I could put on on the table, but also a scarf to put over a lamp to give it color. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and uh, I had my chimes or my um, bells and I had some some crystals and my my tarot, but also scent. So again, a candle and and some things to put scent because I love having a candle going in my office. Uh, and haven't been attending to that because I've been more mobile than usual lately. Uh, so thank you. I am going to create. And in fact, my little brain always goes to um, automatically to businesses. And so it's um, a spiritual home office in a box. <laughs> this is the product coming to Amazon near you. Uh, just a way to immediately set up a space. And I really appreciate the idea of separating out personal and work. I don't know about you guys, but I often will work on my computer in front of the TV and it's not productive because I'm not doing either justice. I'm not doing either thing well. So, yep, a workspace is workspace. And even if that workspace gets folded up so you can set the table for the evening, it's still workspace while it's workspace. So I love that reminder. All right, Geraldine. I love, love your ditty bag um, thing here too, but I cannot offer caution of burning candles or tea lights, uh, paper, paper and candles don't work very well. So just yes. a little bit of caution. Okay. Yes, true, true. All right, Geraldine, do you have any suggestions around getting our workspace more functional? Um, I think... Yeah. I think another another tip that I would have is just to really be conscious about separating your paperwork because people often have one huge inbox and it's combined action items and filing. And so often just having an upright filing system instead of an inbox style, um, like, like um, a hanging file organizer that you can buy at Walmart or at Staples and, and separating your action items, separating your bills that need to be paid and separating to be filed. And so that that will really uh, cut down on the paper clutter that's physically on your desk. We, we have a lot of digital coming at us as well, but just sometimes just having your paperwork organized on your desk so that you don't have the piles, just that's going to free up some mental headspace to tackle some of the harder projects that are a priority. Love that. And clearing clutter does clear up space to mentally as well. All right, Jeanette, how about you? Well, it's all about having the right systems and the right storage. And so you need your furniture to follow your workflow. And that's one of the places I see a lot of struggle is, you know, people buy a desk and it's hard to buy a desk with storage these days too. So you, you're, a lot of people are just doing the, the writing table type desk. So having the right system and storage Another really easy thing you can do is just change the artwork. So like Catherine was saying about how much the color is important, having the artwork reflect your energy too is really important. So having a picture, um, I had a client who was an accountant and she had a picture of water above her desk. And so when she gets stressed out, she would just look at the water and that would calm her down and then she could go back to work. Mm -hmm. um, another client who was a real action taker and he had a picture of a motorcycle standing still behind him. Well, it, he needed the motorcycle in motion. So he changed out the picture of the motorcycle to one going down a hill and it totally changed the energy in the space. So it can be a big change or it can just be as simple as a small change to completely change the energy in your office. And yes, you've got to be able to close the door. Even if there's no door, 
you've got to shut the computer down. You've got to, you know, go walk around the block. You, you have to shut the door on work. Yes. And, and that's can be challenging, especially in COVID and working at home. And again, if you're mobile lifestyle um, and if you're self-employed and you work out of your home, it's easy to collapse them and to have them overlap. So um, that's a great space in terms of, of mental environment as much as it is physical environment as well. Um, and one of the things that I would say practically, I'm the I'm holding up the mobile lifestyle end of things. You can get a lot of little practical things that help you with um, being organized like a second screen. Uh, it's the background is so that's very simple and small and portable. I have portable um stands that raise my computer up so that it's at eye level in terms of uh, so that you know people are not looking at my multiple double chins and so forth uh but the all of them fold up collapse down into one bin that I can carry in my truck uh so it is quite feasible to set yourself up for success in your space but you have to find the things that work for you a second monitor can be very helpful for some people for others it's very distracting and splits your focus too much to be productive so what's your style of work and what works for you and then how do you need it to be to fit the lifestyle that you have as well um and one thing that we haven't touched on that i want to also bring in is um auditory, our auditory environment, because we're talking a lot about our visual environment. Um, and I know for me, when I did a, an exercise and did my ideal life, um, that it was very interesting because uh, I noticed when I wrote out my ideal life, that many of my references were auditory. I didn't think of myself as very auditory. I always thought it was just highly visual. Um, a very auditory kinesthetic. And so I could ch I changed my environment immediately by simply attending to, do I want silence? Do I want some bird song in the background? Do I want music? What do I want that will support my environment now? Um, in all senses, right? Smell, sight, touch, what do what really supports us uh, in all of our senses to feel the way we want to feel? So we can be who we want to be and do what we want to do out of that space. Yes. Um, and it can be something as simple as, you know, like I have a, a glass of pop here and I was going to put it in a regular glass. And I thought, no, nope, I need a pretty glass uh, because I can. And it sets a tone of pleasure and sensuality. And that that pleasure and sensuality permeates my work as well then I'm coming from pleasure instead of push and have to and hard and making do and all of those other things so even something as simple as what's the glass we're drinking out of impacts our environment impacts how we work all right what are some other things that you have noticed that clients have done that have been very counterproductive to their success so in regards to whether it's again their personal or business success what are some things that clients often do that you've noticed that causes problems, gets in the way of them being successful, slows them down? So, Geraldine, what do you say? And then Catherine and then Jeanette. I'm going to let one of the other ladies go first because I've spoken a couple times here. Okay, Catherine. Hi. Uh, I'm finding that people, again, that they're, they're making do as you were saying, you've got to set these things up. And for example, if I was in a spare room and the closets were mirrored, a lot of play that went a little fat, everybody went mirrored closets or whatever. And they're really bad for sleeping. Let me tell you that there's too much light reflection refraction. But if you're working in a space with giant mirrors right there, you can see yourself at your desk. Guess what? You're going to double your work load mm. visually it's going to be hanging on you like this. Okay. If you're going to use a mirror, it's got to be a purpose. I would think to bring in lights or bounce off for more light or to check yourself before doing your zoom courses and stuff like that. But they're just really not working with mirrors very well. Uh, another fellow I went, it was an insurance company with all these little offices, these little dens and the guy had the walls removed and put up glass so they could all see each other and be be a community or whatever. Well, it backfired on him because it was like working in a glass bubble of fishbowl kind of stuff. And when I went in there, I just I dropped my jaw and then I went, okay, be respectful. 
put the jaw back up. I was just out of your mind. But we rearranged his desk so we went looking straight at somebody else's face as they're talking on the on the wall too. But so some people do choose things in the moment that makes sense. Uh, but in reality, you know what? People do want their privacy and they they uh, they don't want to double their workload or they don't want to keep looking at how they look or they're fixing their hair all day or whatever that, that means. So just um, pay attention, backpedal a little bit before you make some of these decisions that you can't uh, redo again that easily. Okay, awesome. Love that. Um, all right. And Jeanette, what do you think? Uh, especially with everybody working from home, don't do work in the bedroom. The bedroom's good for two things, and one of them is not work. Mm-hmm. And so you're not going to sleep well if you're doing work in your bedroom because then, you know, that four o'clock mind comes in anyway. And if that's your office, then you're not going to think anything about getting up and going and doing it. And you know, if you need to have a notebook by your table to write down that brilliant idea, that's fine. But you don't want to get up and turn the computer on. If you have to have a home office in your bedroom and put a, get a divider screen or something, and you just really got to make sure that it's closed off. And once you cross that doorway at the end of the day, it's shut. It, mm-hmm. You have to really look at it like a door. So mm-hmm. that's one thing I, I really try not to put desks in my bedrooms at all. I, I don't like, doing that because it just it interrupts your sleep you're not going to sleep well even if you're not thinking about work you won't sleep well yeah exactly and then it's right there calling you all night long (laughs) so yeah okay and Geraldine, what are some common mistakes that people make when it comes to getting organized so I, i find one of the mistakes that people make in their home office particularly is having multiple workstations within their house. So they might have a spare room that they've used as an office and they say, oh, Gerilyn, the lighting isn't good in here. So I always work on my dining room table. And so they've got half of their stuff in the spare room, half of their stuff at the dining room table. So if you've got a designated office space in your home and you don't like it and you're not excited about working in that space, just change the space, you know, go and, and make a work zone in your dining room so that it's away from the living room and away from your kitchen area and set up that space and 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 just be intentional and say okay this is the space that has the best lighting for me this is the space where I'm comfortable but just designate that one zone as as a workspace um we've we've we, it's been harder and harder to have work life bound um that work life balance and boundaries during the pandemic and so if you don't have designated zones in your house it is harder at five o'clock to mentally shut that door and i just don't want you walking through your home and, and seeing the pieces of work in, in all of those different spaces when it's your free time Mm, all right. Well, and now let's talk about just really quickly, what are, what are some of the, the tips or hints that you may have around speaking of work-life balance? Um, lots of people work at home who are listening to this. Uh, and even if they're not working at home full-time, if they've gone back to the office or something, they still tend to work at home. And for many, especially women, uh, there's the constant pulls of all of the other things that we do in the hats that we wear. So, you know, like the laundry sitting right there that I could throw in while I'm on this, there's, you know, this and that, that I could do. And, Oh, it's middle of the day. So I'll pop out and grab some groceries when it's not as busy, etc. So it gets easy to um, have all of those things kind of blur and pull on us. So what are some ways that we can help with our environment to to support balance, but without balance being the trying to be all things at all times to all people and in all ways. You know what I mean? I'm not sure if I asked the question clearly, but just go ahead and answer whatever you want, whatever you heard. <laughs> so whoever wants to go first. 
I think um, setting some designated time in your schedule for personal errands. So look at your calendar week and block off a two hour period where you say, okay, I need to do the dry cleaning. I need to run out to the store, but block that time off intentionally. Don't just allow yourself to use business working hours to do do personal things. And so as you sort of look at your calendar, sort of look at what, what's coming up next week and say, okay, I know I've got some errands, you know, pick a two hour block, set that aside in your schedule for, you know, perhaps Sunday afternoon or Tuesday evening, block it off. And then when things come up, say, no, I've, I've designated sort of Tuesday night as my runaround time. And then that way you're not eating up valuable business hours during the workday when you have a better opportunity to get a hold of people. That's a great idea. And one of the things that, it you know, I've been self-employed for the better part of 35 years. Um, and one of the reasons that I love it is the flexibility. And one of the downsides of it is the flexibility. <laughs> so I sometimes, well, even now, will ask myself, if I was working a job, would I ask my boss for this? And if I wouldn't, then I don't ask this boss for that, you know, so it's like, oh, would I, is it okay to just take off for three hours and and go do this and that and this and that? Meanwhile, by the way, avoiding whatever is probably really important on my list. <laughs> um, then, you know, my boss would not say yes. So this boss should not say yes either. So yeah, having some structure, using a calendar to support that. Anybody else got any suggestions around that? Yeah, go ahead. I I, uh, I love what you were saying, Geraldine. I agree. And I try. Uh, and we started this in the summer. Uh, Friday afternoons are off, which means I can I can bake. I can get ready for happy hour. I can, you know, do the shopping or dog, buy dog food or whatever that I need to do. And also um, Saturdays, I try not to open my PC. I'll just check my emails and stuff from before. But, but the other interesting thing is I have a long break. Uh, one afternoon a week and I go play pickleball and I just get out of get out have my lunch go out get my shoes on and now I have to move go to from the outside courts to the inside courts because it's too much snow on the ground uh but it's a way of recreation and looking forward and taking care of me as well too so some of the the break and the monotony here um you really have to do that and I find when I get off of this to go for a break I end up opening another tablet or another phone while I'm doing or read something on my tablet or the news. And then I come back and I'm back on the t- uh, the PC is again. So that's what I have to be aware of is that there, there's multiple technical things out here. I need a change from that and be very conscious of planning these things. Go bake some cookies or something once in a while. And be intentional about it. I think that's the big word is very intentional about putting it in there so that it's not an avoidance. It's a get to that helps break up the time and the thing. And just as a quick aside, one of the things that I do again, mobile or not, I did this when I was had my own home and I I do this now. I do it more now is uh, I find working in restaurants actually very productive for me. The Mm -hmm. white noise is very powerful. I, someone brings me everything I need. I can sit there for three, four hours and I get a lot done in a restaurant. And my bargain with myself is I'm going to go and do these things. And therefore I get lunch or I get a nice supper or I get whatever it is. And so if I'm resisting, one of the things that I can find that helps me is I will give myself the treat of a getting out of the house because I don't a lot. Uh, sometimes B, I get someone else to come and take care of me and nurture me and so forth. I go pick a food that I like, like Vietnamese or whatever it may be. And, and the first thing I ask, do you have good Wi-Fi? Yep. No problem. Okay, great. And the noisier it is, it often the better. I just tune it out. I get really focused. So if you, um, if your environment isn't working, go to a different environment. Yes. And take your computer with you. You know, we are all pretty mobile now. So like you said, whether it's a tablet or a laptop or even your phone, you can still get a lot done in a different environment. All right. Yep. Anybody else on the uh, things that we can do to to support? So I think it's important to realize that you are at work and if you are at work, you would also get some breaks. So as entrepreneurs, we forget that part. And so you know, give yourself a break. You like you get stuck or something. Okay. Well, 
you know, go walk around the block or you know, maybe you throw the laundry in or, or something like that. So you can use some of that, that time to get away from the computer and get a different look on things. Because Sometimes you really do just need to walk away from it mm-hmm. for 15 minutes or half an hour. And then you can come back and it's like, it gets easy. So yeah. <laughs> it's okay to give yourself those breaks, but you just have to be conscious of the time as far as, Hey, look, did I put in eight hours today? You know, did I get everything done today? And I give myself Fridays off too. Cause I, I, <laughs> I like that. I, yeah. I don't like working Friday afternoon. So I take Friday afternoon off. I'll work all day Saturday. I don't care, but Friday afternoon. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and there's lots of ways that you can shift your environment, especially online. As you can see, I'm in the tropics here. Now I'm looking out the window at snowbanks in front of me. And <laughs> frankly, that depresses the hell out of me. So I will sit here and put my environment on behind me and close the blinds because then I'm somewhere warm. I, it literally warms me up immediately. And I'm happier working when I have palm trees and ocean than I am when I'm looking at, at snowbanks. So part of it is also what, what makes you happy, what lights you up. All right. So um, two things, and then we'll start to wrap up. One is I want you to talk to people a little bit about, so very briefly about how can you work with people remotely? Because the challenge is many of us have done hands-on work in the past and we still do, but uh, everybody pivoted or almost everybody pivoted during the pandemic to a hybrid model or a fully online model. How do you work in your arenas, which tend to be very hands-on remotely? Or do you? So just very quickly, how do you do that? What is that? How does that work? Does it work in what you do? Sure. Well, I had used to uh, teach at the college. Yeah. And so that stopped. So it was very easy in a sense to, well, not really easy, but I had to move everything to an online. So this here is my where I teach. This is where I talk to people. Uh, this is where I coach them. They I can see into their house. They can send me pictures if they want, or we can just do a walkthrough. Um, yeah, it was quite an adaption, but it, it seemed to work out okay. And we're still doing it now. So you do feng shui consultations by having people take you through their house on Zoom. So yes. you can still see their space and help them tell yep. them to move yep. things around and stuff. Okay. And Jeanette, is it the same with you? Pretty much um, through the magic of Zoom is a wonderful thing. So uh, just through their phones or whatever, they can take me and give me a tour of the house. And then I can say, this is it. This is it. Um, I can select fabrics for them. We have to use snail mail for that unless they're happy with with doing the computer. Some people are happy with just looking at a picture of fabric. I like to touch it. Mm-hmm. But I... I do shopping online. I can go shopping with a client online. We can share a screen and we can go shopping together. So it really doesn't affect anything. I can select colors, send them the chip, look at the the chip. So with a little bit of snail mail, I can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, you do have to have the snail mail because colors on the screen are different than the actual physical colors. You have to interact with them in in person to really have the sense of the color you know, saturation and stuff. All right, Geraldine, how about you? Can you help organize people from afar? So how I work with my clients online is by doing goal setting. Mm -hmm. And so we'll typically um, set up a Zoom meeting and and go over their goals. And I have a, a system of like a quarterly accountability system where we'll check in each quarter, try and figure out the progress on those goals and then set goals together for the next quarter. And so I have a number of clients that I work online with that system. Um, I just years ago, I used to set goals, you know, once a year. And I just found by the middle of December, I had a lot of things that just kept getting pushed over to the next year, over to the next year. And uh, between Christmas and year end, if something's not done by December 10th, it's probably not going to happen. And so I changed and went to a quarterly goal setting method and my productivity and really increased at that time because I had these check-ins during the year to really just 
do a second check-in to make sure that still was a priority. And I had time to sort of change my schedule to make sure that that goal got accomplished. So I uh, love it. Okay. And speaking, I'm going to piggyback on that. Speaking of goal setting, um, I, I want to provide an offer here. I have an upcoming event. It's currently called Business Acceleration Booster Review, Revise and Recommit. It's going to be changed to Purposeful Planning in the new year because I hate that name. Anyway, so um, <laughs> what it is, is, and the only reason that I'm doing this on what is normally an evergreen um, recording. So if you're doing podcasts or recordings, do try and keep them evergreen by not just putting specific uh, date related stuff. But I do every quarter a planning with entrepreneurs to support you, but planning with purpose and with a different approach rather than just a whole bunch of goal setting that you're going to then forget and regret or, you know, ignore and and, uh, not have make a difference. We really do start with who are you being? And then from that, what do you want to have as your outcome? And between the two, what is the doing that fits, that will be an expression of your being and give you the having that you want to have so that you can have the impact that you want to have? There is one coming up December 17th. At the end of the year, we do look back over the whole year and forward for the whole year. Normally, they're 90 days. So every 90 days, we have this. So whenever you watch this recording, if you go to the same link, you will be able to find uh, either that that page or redirect to the page that will allow you to register. I do this for free for uh, people, one, so that you can get to know me, but two, I, I believe like all of these ladies, it really does help to have other people help us get organized, get our space in, in order, get our minds straight, to be able to see clearly that which is too close to us. And our dreams, our desires, our goals, our who do we want to be is often on the end of our nose and we can't see it. So having a structure, a way to really be able to see what we, where we're at, what worked, what didn't, and what we're going to do coming up is a great way to support yourself and to do it every 90 days, like Gerilyn said, or have monthly accountability with someone uh, like that, like a coach like Gerilyn, is so valuable to keep us on track with what we're creating and bringing in experts to help you with being able to create an environment, a home, an office that really supports you in being who you want to be and being effective and powerful. So on that note, how do people, I'll put the link for registering for the event in the chat, please do. And uh, can the three of you share with us how people can find out more about you? And if you have a gift or something that they can go and get, tell us about that and spell out how they can get that. So who would like to go first? Jeanette, you're nodding. So you go first. (laughs) Okay. Best place to reach me is at my website, which is thecolorwhisperer.com. T H E C O L O R. There's no U for you Canadians. Um, w H I S P E R E R. There's two E R's.com. Um, and there is an ebook on there that talks about designing for your soul because that's what I do. It's really a reflection of your true essence. And that's it gets into that. And there is also a place to sign up for a free half hour consultation. So you can go ahead and sign up there and we will meet by Zoom and we can talk about your home and see what's got you stuck. And we'll get you unstuck. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. Okay. Who's next? I can go ahead. Um, um, my website is pleaseorganizemylife.com and that's organize with a Z. And on my website, I've got a contact me form. So just please um, take a moment and fill that out. And then we'll uh, have a one hour free uh, consultation call where I can hopefully try and assess sort of some of the areas that you need some support in and better sort of describe the ways that I can help you. And as I thank you for being on our call today, just write in the comments that you would like a copy of my free gift. And my free gift to you today is, is um, a flow chart to help you sort of decide what paperwork you need to keep and what you need to shred. And a lot of times uh, people, even in their homes, that that's their biggest question is how long do I need to keep this insurance paper for? Or how long uh, do I need to keep this? And so um, I've, I've got a, a really great flow chart that we've designed that will just sort of answer those questions for you quite simply. Love that. Awesome. All right. And Catherine. 
You gals are all amazing. We've got some amazing gifts together here. I prepared a one of a kind guide using the five elements I mentioned with Chinese medicine. So it's a it's a new booklet, an ebook called Success Secrets for Savvy Managers. And in that, it separates the elements into the personalities. And so they can show you what to expect from JV partners, even co-workers, your family, their skills, their weaknesses. This is where I found my aha moments. And I really want to share with this. And uh, all this knowledge will lead to your benefit. So on my site, just use my name, katherinewilking.com. I keep it nice and simple is where you'll find a personal element profile quiz. If you want to take the quiz for yourself, you'll get some of the answers uh, there. And there's a short video series. But basically, the book here is the magic, the technical, the practical for you. Enjoy every moment. Awesome. All right. So spell out your website just so that people have the proper spelling. KatherineWilking.com. So Catherine's with a K, K K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. And the last name is Wilking, W I L. K-I-N-G. So katherinewilking.com. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. That's great. Now, I just want to wrap up with what's one piece of advice that you have for people when it comes to feeling like they have an environment that truly supports them in being who they want to be in the world? What's one tip or hint or thing you would like to leave people with when it comes to their environment? All right, Jeanette, you go first. Dare to be you. Coco Chanel says the best color is the color that looks best on you. And that's what your home should be unique. And it should be a home that truly makes you feel good. Mm. Dare to be. Beautiful. All right. And Gerilyn. I think my one tip for you is um, when I've studied sort of successful people in the past is, is very simple. And that just is to make your bed in the morning. So when you get up and you, you make your bed and leave your bedroom looking nice, it just sets you up for success. And there's something about that dopamine hit of just having a quick win early in the morning to have something accomplished, to have something completed, that that just triggers your brain to just really, really start your day off well. So I know it sounds funny, but um, it just a lot of studies have shown that people who make their bed in the morning are highly successful. And so just uh, trust me and give it a try for a week. I love that. And that's so funny, because I, I always do it. But it never occurred to me that part of what it does for me is gives me that little sense of accomplishment right away. Um, Mm -hmm. That dopamine hit. And and yes, that would prime the pump for getting stuff done for the rest of the day. So brilliant. All right. All right. And Catherine. Yes, um, I counsel my uh, students and my clients to make their bed too. Uh, Sherilyn, again, you get something done, something's in order, something's not going crazy. Um, right off the bat here. But one of the things I share is to how do you cultivate chi energy, good chi energy in the home. And I have a book list also on my site. You can find it there. But I tell people just go to the window and open it up and inhale. Just breathe. That that's there, that zest, that freshness that gets right into your lungs. And when you're making your bed or cleaning your office or vacuuming, whatever, open, crack a window, even if it's minus 10 degrees out there, just get that chi essence into the home and fluctuate. And that gives you that energy boost as well, too. So cultivate chi energy everywhere you go. Awesome. All right. Well, and I I kind of heard three things repeated and underlying a lot of what we talked about today. One is get support because it's often challenging for us to do this for ourselves, to figure out what does feel really good for us or how to get started on that big daunting pile or whatever. So get some support from someone outside of you to help with creating that which supports you, whether that's your mindset and a coach or whether that's your environment and a designer or a feng shui expert or an organizer. The second thing that I heard is a lot of the tips that you gave were really bite-sized, little tips and hints and suggestions that are small. We don't have to create our environment by overhauling everything all at once. No. Organize one drawer. Organize half of one drawer. Start with one thing. Put a scarf on your desk. Do something little that 
that touches you and improves your environment and your energy immediately. It don't let it be this overwhelming have to to do that takes you out of making progress. And then the third thing that I heard is really let it be what works for you. Don't listen to what everyone else says. Don't listen to the, you know, popular design, you know, colors or whatever. Don't tell, let people tell you how you have to um, figure out your day. Do what works for you, but truly what works for you. And so sometimes one of the best ways to do that is to call in other people to give you some ideas of things that we don't, we aren't doing. Because if we knew, we would be doing them. And we're not. (laughs) So we don't know. So call in someone who can give you some ideas. Someone like these brilliant, beautiful women here who are also passionate. Thank you for being passionate about what you do, for bringing more calm and beauty and uh, je ne sais quoi, as Catherine said a minute ago, uh, into your world and more energy so that you can be the difference that only you can be. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank you for being the support that you are. And folks, do something today, today, right now to support you and your environment every day, and you will have more impact and more income in the new year. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful and bodacious week. Bye for now. Thanks for inviting us.